Top Tip Tuesday time again. It's Bob here from Insidium and on today's video, this is a cool one. I'm going to show you how we can set up a granular sim. We're going to do a sand simulation and then I'll show you how we can mix in a different fluid type. We'll do a water sim on top of that so the two different types of fluid interact. Here's how we do it. In our scene then we have a ground plane with an XP collider tag on it and we've got this object, this torus, and then we've got a couple of emitters. The water emitter is switched off for now. We're going to start by looking at the emitter sand. So if I just make my torus invisible and just go forward a frame, you'll see that we've set up this emitter sand to emit particles from within the volume of that torus. This is going to be our sand object. And in the emission tab, we're doing an hexagonal shot and we need to pay attention to this. The particle radius is 1.5. This has to be the same in both emitters for both liquid types. With an SPH fluid solve, the particle radius must be identical. Okay, and we have got a default NX gravity in the scene and a default NX fluids. So if we hit play, this is going to simulate as a fluid simulation because by default, the NX fluids is set to SPH liquid. We want this to be set to granular. So if we hit play now, this is going to be a grains sim, but we don't have enough accuracy for this to kind of hold up. Um, there isn't enough cohesion and friction and stability. So so with granular sims, you need high substeps to start getting that nice clumping. So let's put our substeps up to say 20 and hit play. And we're still not going to get some clumping, but it's holding together a bit better. So now let's go down to our granular settings and our friction is only at 3%. So there isn't enough friction for these um, grains particles to clump together. Let's put this up to say 79, 80. Hit play. And now it is able to stand on its own. Cool. If I reduce this stability, it will enable it to crack more easily. Let's put the stability down to, say, 5 and hit play. And now our sand, yep, yeah, it's beginning to crack. And that's looking quite cool. So what we want is this sand not to crack until the water hits it. So we can put that stability back on to say 20 and we know that that's going to start solving and it's going to settle at a nice, steady, solid state for our sand object. Perfect. So now we want to bring in some water. So for now, let's just switch off that sand emitter. I'm going to activate this water emitter and this in the object tab, it's just a emitter shape sphere. We're emitting in hexagonal mode and very importantly, look, the radius is set to 1.5, exactly the same as our sand. The problem is, if we start simulating now, this is going to simulate as grains. It's going to be a granular solve. It's not water because that's what our solver is set to, granular. We need it to be granular because we want our sand to solve as grains, obviously. So here's how we mix. What we do is go to the water emitter, tags, extensions, insidium, and we've got an NX fluid tag. And here we can set it to SPH and set the fluid type to liquid. And now it will ignore that granular fluid type from the parent solver and it'll solve it as liquid. Brilliant. Now we'll just leave this default apart from, we're just going to put a little bit of surface tension on there. Now if we hit play, we're getting this now. We're getting this this pressurized explosion of particles. That's because we've got particles being born on top of each other. They're pumping more fluid in, which causes a high density situation, which gives us this, this pressure. So what we need to do is go to the NX fluids and we need to check the density of new particles. And if they're born with it, let's put this down to 105. If they're born with a fluid density of 105%, so a high fluid density, they're just killed and therefore they don't contribute to that fluid density and we don't get that explosiveness. Yep, and then we're getting a nice stream of particles. Okay, so there is our water. So now if we reintroduce our sand emitter, these will simulate within the same sim. One will be liquid, one will be uh, grains. Let's have a look. 
And yet that's now interacting with that sand. And if I just hit pause and make the water invisible, you can see that it has, look, it has nudged it a bit, but the sand is so stable and has so much friction, it hasn't been able to kind of destabilize it enough. So now we need to play with the settings. So what we can do is go to our fluids again, back to those granular settings. Now remember it was the stability that we lowered to make it fall apart but we need this high stability when they're born. So what we can do is data map this stability to the particle age. So when the particles uh, just been born, they have this full stability of 20, and as they get older, it reduces. Let's go to the mapping tab, add an age map. We need to use the category SPH, the parameter is stability, and we want to do it over age and this 0 to 30s frames here min and max is mapped to the bottom of our graph the x so 0 frames up to 30 and then the stability is mapped to the y with 0 here and full stability here so we want full stability when they're born on 0 frames and as they get I think it's maybe to frame 20 as they get to frame 20 we want to lower that stability down so the water can make them fall apart. So let's have a look, we'll start simulating. Here comes the water. And yeah, look, we're getting more cracking happening there. Look, definitely, let's just make the water invisible. So that has had more of an effect. We could lower that stability even lower so it's easier to fall apart. Let's have a look. Here comes our water and it's gonna hit in a second. Here we go. Yeah, and now that's even less stable. Look, we've got all of this kind of crumbling going on as our water is hitting our particles. So that is the basics of how we set up granular sims with water, so two different fluid types interacting in the same simulation.